Okay, I am going to talk a little bit about this case. I didn't think I was going to, but there's a lot of stuff brought up, and this is a safety issue that I really want to bring out to people tonight. Um, I'm looking at this whole thing as a possible stalking. Uh, I know that's been brought up many times. That, you know, he was stalking these people, and or, or at least one of the young ladies involved. So let's look into the stalker's mind for a minute. What we can do to prevent this? We do know what stalking is. I mean, I've got the code uh, or the definition of it right here. Is it's just a short one. Stalking is defined as repeated unwanted attention. It's harassment, contact, or any other behavior directed at a specific person that would cause a re that person to have reasonable fear. Um, he, this, our suspect attempted to contact our victims uh, several times through social media, uh, driving by the residence, being out by the residence. We don't know what other attempted contact they have because we don't have any reports of it. So what I'm going to cover is is really quick. In a study that was made, in reality, most stalkers, they don't suffer from hallucinations or delusions, but they do suffer from depression, uh, substance abuse, and personality disorders. Sound familiar? You know, so our suspect does have uh, substance abuse problems. He's a, an addicted personality, and he also has depression, and we know he's a socially awkward person. In 1993, uh, Paul Mullen out of uh, Victoria, what's the name of this place? It's Victoria's Forensic Care. It's a high security hospital for the mentally ill. He conducted a study, I think it's just outside of Melbourne, Australia. He conducted a study on uh, stalkers. And when he did it, these are convicted people who were convicted for stalking. When he did this study, he came up with five subcategories on stalking. Out of those five subcategories, I found two that fit our suspect. And one of them is incompetent subtype. The incompetent subtype is socially awkward, given their inability to comprehend and carry out socially normal and accepted courting rituals. His dates, there's people who came forward and said that he was extremely scary or awkward or did something different or weird and... Uh, what they're trying to do is the, they're intimacy seekers and they hope their behavior would lead to a closer relationship, satisfying their need for, uh, for contact and intimacy. So to me, he fits in that place because he is socially awkward. He has a hard time with relationships. Uh, you know, Look at his age and, and who he's dating and, and if he is dating at all. Um, when it came to his school, his schoolmates back when he was in, in the you know, younger years, he was being he was bullied, and then he got older. He started becoming the bully, and he was just an awkward individual. The other one, the other subcategory was a uh, or uh, is predator. This one, this is for power and control, and this predator, this predator subtype. If you look at it, he let's see what does it state down here. They're always. They're, they find pleasure in gathering information against the victim and fantasizing about assaulting them, either physically, you know, sexually, or, or violently. But they fantasize about this. They find pleasure in gathering all this information, and then they find pleasure in following through with what they found out and what they think they can accomplish. So with those, they kind of fit. Uh, they, they fit two of the, two of the, out of the five fit this guy. And what do you do? If you see something that's out of the normal, you've got to really pay attention and really watch. Uh, you got to watch everything around you. If you're in school, if you're at work, or if you're at home, or you're out at the park, whatever you're doing, even when you have your, if you have children with you, if you're elderly, if you're whatever it is, watch and see if something looks out of the normal. I, like if you normally do this, then you see something that starts appearing all the time and it just doesn't look right to you, a car, an individual. If you find text messages on your phone that you don't recognize and they're making odd comments, your social media, if somebody tries to friend you that you don't know, uh, really vet people before you accept them as friends on social media because you don't know what they're looking for. Just pay attention. If something doesn't look right or feel right, note it, report it if you have to. If it's making you afraid, report it. Have, have law enforcement talk to them. You know, and like I've said before, law enforcement is kind of, we, we, we haven't really dropped the ball. We just have certain laws we have to follow, and, and we, we can't just go out and, and arrest somebody because you feel they're stalking them. I mean, stalking didn't start, and stalking charges didn't start until 1990 out of California. A celebrity was shot in 1989, and they actually got a stalking law passed, and after that, several states followed suit, 
and there's just a handful right now that have stalking as a felony. So you've really got to you've really got to pay attention. Uh, keep your eyes open. If something doesn't look right, it's out of the norm. Just watch it, report it, have your camera or your phone available at all times. And that's when we get into the the three self-defense tactics that you need to create a self-defense plan, and that's your mind, body, and tools. You know, you have to have your mind available to be able to read things and see things and know the laws and know what you can and can't do and know what you're capable of doing. You know, and then your body, just go off of what you're capable of doing, what your abilities are. Um, and then you go into the tools. If you choose hand-to-hand -hand or if you choose a weapon of any kind, I've had some people on here not like the idea of firearms, and a lot of people love the idea of firearms. Well, that's fine. Everybody has their choice. But whatever choice you make, train with it. Learn it. Learn how to use it. But right now, the greatest tool you'll ever have when it comes to combating a stalker is your mind. You have to keep your mind open, your eyes open. Read things. Remember things. If this doesn't look right, or if I've seen this before many times, it's not. I don't feel good about it. This doesn't feel right. Uh, watch your social media. Watch your phones. Pay attention to stuff. When you're at home, lock your doors. Uh, especially college students. When you have a large group of people, teach them if they're living in an apartment with you to lock the door. Uh, just make it a habit. Just always just be secure. Make sure your windows are locked. Uh, don't tell strangers where you live. Don't tell strangers what you drive. They're going to find it out if they want to, but make them work for that. And don't you tell them where it's at or what you're doing. Don't If you think you have somebody stalking you, don't do a routine all the time. Don't do the same thing every single day. You know, If you wake up and you go to this coffee shop and then you go to this class every morning, change it up a little bit. Drive a different direction or walk a different direction, whichever way you go. Uh, get a coffee from another place. I know it's hard, but you can do that. Uh, and then just go to another class, or go to your class, but just go a different direction. But try not to do, or if you're going to work, take a different route to work. Don't take the same routes. If you think you have a stalker, throw them off. And if you can prove that you have somebody following you, contact law enforcement, file a report on it. So the thing is, there's, there's just a lot of things I just threw out there a very short period of time, but think about this case and how he falls under those two categories in, in the subtypes of stalking. And... We have to remember we can't put everything in a nice, neat little package. We, we want to because that's what we can wrap our brains around. Who honestly can understand why an individual would go in and brutally murder four young people for absolutely no reason? We can't wrap our heads around that. And so we want to make it a, there's a reason for it. So the reason has to be drugs. The reason has to be money. Does it or is evil evil? It's a thought. Like I said, it's. It, I'm not sitting there saying this is what happened or this is how it happened. There's a lot of evidence out there, and I've talked to some, some people that, that they know who's up there. They know who's assigned to the investigation up there, and there's a lot of people involved in this investigation, from the state police, county, to the city police, to the FBI. There are a lot of people involved in this. There's going to be a lot of evidence brought forward. There's going to be a lot of testimony brought forward. I think come June, you're going to see some, some interesting stuff happen, possibly before then. So stay safe, stay vigilant. If it looks out of place, it is. If it doesn't look right, it's not. If you, if you like anything I have to say, you know, please subscribe. If you want me to talk about something else or, or teach something else, um, just ask. And, and I'll, I'll, if I don't know it, I'll have it, I'll have it done for you. But stay safe, stay vigilant, and have a great night.